Uh, hello again, Chip Rarig, your, uh, your jacked up on coffee city administrator. Uh, most of you know I don't drink coffee on a regular basis, but Anthony at uh, Stationery insisted I have some today, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm talking faster than my usual East Coast way and walking faster, than, even though the mayor beat me over today. Today's again uh, the 22nd of, of uh, February. Um, no, not February, April. Oh, it's oh, April. Lord. Oh, it seems like it's February. Oh, Lord. Uh, of April, uh, focus on, on the safety and well-being of our community, and, and today we're going to be talking about resiliency, resiliency of our community. Um, and then in the, in, the, in the words of our, our mayor, of course, the art of good government is communication. So that's what we're here to do is try to continue to communicate with, with you, the community. So in, in addition to working with our Monterey County Health Director, our partners like Visit Carmel and the Chamber of Commerce um, and the restaurateurs with state and local uh, officials um, and federal officials, uh, Congressman Panetta as well, um, we're, we're looking at ways of proactively and incrementally reopening our, our, our community um, with best practices and protocols in place. What we don't want to do, and I think the, the, the governor mayor used it, uh, the term last week, was a dimmer switch rather than a light switch. So gradually coming back online, and I know the mayor has been pressuring me to make sure that we don't, uh, we don't do anything that's uh, untoward from the perspective of trying to, to force reopening, um, but again, more, more, do it in a more gradual way. Um, because we are the uh, we're the group that can best regulate. We regulate right now by issuing building permits and other permits. So, and the question is may come, which is why we're talking about resiliency and, and rebuilding at this point in time. Well, the the fact of the matter is because we as an enterprise are facing economic catastrophe. I mean, we're looking at upwards to a 50% of our revenue being stripped away uh, by COVID-19. So it's only prudent to begin the planning process. So. Uh, that's what we're here today today to do, and in the future, the mayor and I will be here, I think, every two weeks, every two Wednesdays, every other Wednesday, and we'll, we'll bring other uh, folks on board, maybe someone from the chamber, visit Carmel, uh, from the CRA, from the resident's perspective, to get other people's perspectives. So, Mayor, what do you have for us, sir? Well, I just wanted to take a minute, Chip, and thank you for the intro, to go ahead and talk about the importance of coming back as a community. Um, I don't want the protocol for how to open our businesses or how to get our lives back on track here coming down from uh, bureaucrats at the state level who really don't understand how to operate the businesses that we have in this community. Um, the people that are best to, in, in, to be involved in developing that protocol are the actual business operators themselves. That's why Chip and I on a weekly basis have been joining the business roundtable at 8.30 having an 11 o'clock meeting with uh, David Fink and the restaurateurs to go ahead and talk about, okay, what do you guys think you're gonna do? What's your opening gonna look like? And as the governor said, I just watched his speech a few uh, minutes ago, it's, it's, this is not an on and off switch. We don't wanna be like Georgia, where you just say, oh, everything's gonna go back to normal. It's gonna, be, it's gonna take a while. What are those protocols gonna look like? What are the rules and guidelines that we're gonna need to be able to operate successfully? And it's best that we have that discussion as a community. I also wanna hear from the Residents Association. I know that one of the things that's going to be very apparent is we are a very retail-dependent community. Hotel tax, transient occupancy tax, uh, sales tax. I mean, we, we really need those resources, and we're going to be very, very constrained as we start to move through our next budget cycle. It's budget time right now. We're going to take a look at the capital program again and see where we can cut additionally. And what are essential programs that we provide? What is our essential level of services? Just as the state wants us to go ahead and define the protocols for operating businesses. We need to figure out how we're gonna operate in a new normal. And as I said the last time, there is no new normal. It's not, it's just not, there's no normal and new, it's just all new. And we're gonna enter a new per period here where we have to figure out how are we gonna operate with less revenue and still the same demands as the community expects from us. So I'm looking forward to hearing from the community. I think it will be good to have uh, the chamber here. I'd like to hear the Residents Association joining us in a roundtable discussion on, the, on, a, day, on a weekly basis or bi-weekly. So Chip, I think that's a good suggestion. And as we sit here in uh, the incredible resource that we have here in the uh, Sunset Center, I think it's appropriate that we hear from Christine as to what this may look like and what her thoughts and visions are for us that we try to open up again the cultural side of Carmel, which we're so well known for world-renowned, that what is that going to look like and how are we going to slowly begin to turn the lights back on in this dim hall? So, Christine, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chip, for inviting me today. Christine, Artistic and Executive Director of Sunset Cultural Center, Inc. And first of all, we're very grateful for your leadership, both of you, and um, providing these um, communication updates, I think, has been incredibly helpful to our community. and. We're pleased to be part of it today. It's a little sad to be in an empty theater, but we do have a little uh, sneak preview of some entertainment for you, and we're Excellent. done. Um, 
like everyone else, um, we've been severely impacted by this pandemic. As you can imagine, our business has come, as we know it, has come to a complete standstill um, as a public assembly facility. No concerts, no events, no meetings, no, no weddings, um, no income, really. So um, we're so ever so grateful for our continued support from our city partner. And um, we recognize that we are moving into a, a new vision for the facility, for our organization, for our funding, all of it. But I love the word resilience, and that is the most common word I'm hearing in the dialogues I'm participating in with uh, regional and national arts organization partners. And it's our opportunity, actually, to show our creativity. And so, um, you know, being nearly decimated is no fun, but it's also a challenge, and um, people have risen to the challenge. We launched a virtual fundraiser a couple of weeks ago, and we're so pleased with the support that we've seen and the expression of, even more than the financial support, just the expression of gratitude for what we do and for being a unifying force in the community, um, which is what the arts are. We believe the arts are essential. Mm -hmm. Um, but of course, we've always prioritized the safety of our patrons and our artists um, and our staff above everything else, which is why we've made the decision to remain closed at this time. Um, will likely be the last type of activity you'll see reopening here on the peninsula, but it doesn't mean we won't be active. Um, we are brainstorming daily, um, our team, our board members, our staff, and we have lots of ideas for um, engagement and content that we can provide uh, at this very challenging time for our constituents and our community members. In fact, we've been distributing um, highlight reels of all of our performances on the main stage every Friday. So I would encourage you to go um, to our website and sign up for our email newsletter to be receiving those as well as to get more information on the fundraiser, and I just want to add that we're more determined than ever to help rebuild um, economically the city when we do resume. We've in the past been very proud of the economic impact we've brought to the restaurants and the hotels um, and the stores in town, and, and we really are seeing and hearing, um, of course it's a roller coaster of comments, but there's a general belief right now that there will be a pent up um, demand for live entertainment and gatherings. Of course, not all populations are gonna feel that way, and we're going to institute measures that we've been hearing about, such as uh, that will include social distancing, disinfecting, perhaps even testing prior to, virus testing prior to and during events, um, starting out with really small events, and within and perhaps even without this uh, outside of this beautiful facility, so, such as outdoors on the terrace or other spots throughout town. So um, I don't think I've left anything out, but I do want to mention that we appreciate both the city's support and all of you who've contributed already. Um, we do have a match grant, and um, we'd love to reach our goal in that regard. We've been able to maintain our staffing structure, um, not at full time, but we're trying to keep everybody intact and busy and um, and serving the facility and our um, partner organizations through this time. Um, we are super excited to talk about a uh, release of a video and an original song that was written and um, produced and performed by five local, very talented musicians who have performed on our terrace stage um, in the past during our free spring concert series. So. Um, I'm going to end today with the introduction of one of those performers who performs in the, in the video and the song, and it will be released later today at 5 p.m. on our radio partner, uh, KRML's Pub Talk. So I encourage you all to tune in to that, and it will also be released on our YouTube channel later today. Oh, cool. So if neither of you have anything else, I will very happily introduce one of our own, Raz Vio.
Want to close us out, Chrissy? Um, keep on keeping on, everybody. There's hope out there, and um, everyone's doing the right thing, social distancing, and we will get through this. Well, Hashtag I, arts is essential. I want to thank you for the performance. That was most excellent. When I was a, a child, my mother insisted that I take piano lessons, and so I, I went for three lessons, and the piano instructors pulled my mother aside at the end of the third one and said, Ruth, I really don't think you should waste your money on this. <laughs> So I, I have no musical skills at all, other than knowing what I like, and I really like that. So that was most excellent. Well done. And hopefully you're an indicator of good shows to come. So. And my violin teacher said that uh, he had never seen a student learn the violin more slowly. <laughs> so, so thank you. Persistence. And from, and from three East Coasters, we just want to say uh, take good care. Take good care. Absolutely. Now that it has meaning. <laughs>